Brady Quinn, Fox Sports College and NFL game analyst, and uh, he will be in Ann Arbor. It's number five Michigan on Saturday against the Ohio State. Big noon kickoff on Fox, and uh, you can also listen to him every weekday morning. Two bro, uh, two bros, two pros and a cup of Joe. Two bros with Lavar Arrington and Jonas Knox, and you can catch them on Fox Sports Radio. Good morning, Brady. How are you, bud? I'm doing well, Dan. Uh, you're looking quite dapper Thank you. in your uh, your pumpkin-colored sweatshirt. Thank you, Brady. Thank you. That's Dapper Dan. That's how we came up with that uh, that expression. All right, tell me how Michigan wins this game. Uh, Michigan wins this game if Aiden Hutchinson, the defensive end, and David Ojabo, their other defensive end, do what they've done all year and pester the opposing quarterback. They're both tied for the league in sacks to the Big Ten. And if you look at C.J. Stroud, his completion percentage drops dramatically from a clean pocket versus under pressure. He completes about 73% of his passes from a clean pocket, about 53% when he's under pressure. And that's something that he really hasn't faced much this season. But when you watch him on tape, when guys start to get close, you can tell he doesn't like it. He doesn't want to take off and run. He wants this to be a seven-on-seven, essentially, where he doesn't have to worry about getting hit. That's what we saw last week versus Michigan State, which was one of the better pass-rushing teams but because how that game started off, there was just really no ability for them to get back into that thing, rush the passer. They got pretty worn out, in particular on the outside. How important is this game for Jim Harbaugh? I mean, you could put it up there with pretty much every year. They've played Ohio State and, and trying to find one, find a win in a way of kind of staking his flag in this rivalry and saying, all right, I've arrived. You know, I, I did it as a player but now I've arrived as a coach, and I think that would be a huge signal for this program. You know, it's, it's funny, and, and the reason why I say that is, like, Penn State, who just signed James Franklin to that extension, you know, they've at least beat Ohio State. Like, they've at least showcased, I think, in recruiting, too, they're a little bit more competitive in recruiting versus Ohio State. Um, and, and I think in order for Michigan to get back, they've got to do it at least once. They've got, they've got to be able to pitch that to those recruits once because if I'm a recruit, and I was one at you know, Ohio State in Michigan, and if I was looking at these two schools and, and you have this long line of Ohio State wins versus Michigan, and as much as they can preach to me, well, you can be the change. Come to Michigan, help us beat Ohio State, you can be the change. You're still going to say, I'd rather go with the team that has a better chance of winning a national championship. If Michigan beats Ohio State, they've got the edge going up against an opponent. They already beat Wisconsin in the Big Ten championship. I assume that's who it's going to be. And then a path, obviously, to playing in the college football playoff. They sit now at five. So this is monumental in the case that I think Jim Harbaugh makes not only this Saturday, but also moving forward to every recruit and every Michigan fan that he's preaching why he should be the guy there in Ann Arbor. Why is it a guy who played the position can't find a great quarterback? I, I don't even know that it's not that he can't find one. I mean, J.J. McCarthy is one of the higher recruited quarterbacks that's come onto this roster. Kate McNamara, too, is a little higher recruiter. It's more of the development piece. And I think that's a twofold discussion. It's, it's the sense of what offense and system are you running? And I, I think he's kind of found something that works for them now with Josh Gaddis calling plays. Um, but it's, it's more of the development of finding that guy who's able to kind of take over a game when they need him to most. So it's been those two things that have been elusive for them. I do think they've found that rhythm now getting back to the rushing attack, the rushing game. I mean, if you've looked traditionally – what has won the Big Ten? As much as we want to talk about how talented Ohio State is throwing the football around, they've also, I think three of the last four years, if I'm not mistaken, led the Big Ten in rushing. Like, that's a big component. That's what Michigan started out this season doing and playing good defense and then bringing Cade McNamara along, who now has two-plus touchdown passes in the past you know, few games. And so they're starting to evolve there. We're talking to Brady Quinn, former Notre Dame quarterback. Uh, he will be in Ann Arbor. It'll be a Fox Big Noon kickoff. That will be Ohio State against Michigan. I also wonder about this, and, and you can't help but speculate, that if Jim Harbaugh doesn't beat Ohio State this time around, does he look at that Chicago Bears opening? It's going to be open. And I just wonder, you don't want to turn your back on your alma mater, but that might be one of those where both parties say, you know what, maybe it's just not going to work out like we thought it was. Potentially, you know, but, but I think if, if I was Jim Harbaugh and I'm looking at that next jump, I, I better make sure that it's one that I feel really confident 
that it's position where I can go and have success right away. You have Justin Fields, and he's clearly or, or well aware of how good Justin Fields is. Um, even though they didn't play each other last year, I, I think he's seen enough tape on Justin Fields to know how good he is, what he can be as a quarterback. But there's a lot of other decisions that you've got to make with that roster, a lot of other things that I think, you know, you, you'd probably rather take over the Bears when Aaron Rodgers isn't a part of the Packers anymore. Maybe he's not after this year. I don't know. But the reality is, uh, if that's the only job he's offered and he feels like there's just too much pressure and they've reworked his contract and he just wants to jump back to the pro level, feels like he can be more successful there, sure, you're going to take what's there. But I, I think with this next jump, he's got to be careful because the next jump could be his last one. Whereas Michigan has been by his side, they are still supporting him through all of this. Uh, and as much as Michigan fans want to complain about lack of success, they're much better off with Jim Harbaugh than they were before he got there. Like, let's not forget that. They're recruiting well. They're pumping guys out in the NFL. They're averaging about, you know, nine wins or so. Uh, you'd say maybe before whatever, you know, last year was with the COVID year. But that's what they're averaging now, which is better than what they were. So I just think he's got to be careful about that next jump because it could be his very last. And he's made them relevant. Um, you know, that that we, we do know about Michigan. Uh, we're curious about Michigan. But we know that season always comes down against uh, Ohio State. How – safe should Cincinnati feel at number four in the rankings? I don't feel like they should feel safe only in the sense that, you know, look, they're sitting there at four. I don't think they have any room for error. You know, I, they're favored by a couple of touchdowns versus East Carolina this week, right? You know, a close win versus East Carolina. I believe it's on the road. You know, I don't think they're getting docked or pushed back for it. I just think they have to worry about, they, they have to win. That's all they need to do. And I think they're in because the playoff committee has already you know, put them in this position so far. And you know, you're assuming one of those teams in the top four is going to drop out, right? Uh, at least we're assuming Georgia is going to beat Alabama in the SEC championship game. So at worst, maybe, you know, our best, maybe they move up to three. But I think they should feel pretty safe. I mean, Notre Dame's behind them. They're not going to move ahead of them unless they drop a game, probably in the AAC championship game. Like that's where it gets a little sticky. Like they both have one loss, even though they beat them head to head. They don't have the conference championship to wave over Notre Dame. And, and you can make the case Notre Dame's played better football of late, uh, with the exception of last week where Cincinnati obviously played extremely well, blowing out SMU. But I just I don't look at anyone behind them being able to leapfrog them unless you know they really fall through and they end up dropping either this week's game or obviously, you know, their conference championship, which I think that's the only way they fall out of this thing at this point. We saw what happened with the Giants yesterday that uh, Jason Garrett was fired, the offensive coordinator. What does that matter to a team that is not a good offensive team, no matter who's calling the plays? Yeah, I mean, it's been a lack of execution. They can use Jason Garrett as the scapegoat. The reality is Daniel Jones turns over the football way too much. Uh, I think he's got between seven interceptions, seven fumbles this year. I mean, it's just – it's not a formula for success. He's in his third year starting, and that's been his issue the entire time. You know, Saquon hasn't been healthy, hasn't, hasn't been as impactful. The offensive line that they've continued to keep trying to building upon, it's never really meshed and developed the chemistry they need. Um, you know, it, it, there, there's just so many different issues offensively. I don't think it's going to matter that they're changing out Jason Garrett. And even though Freddie Kitchens, who's had success doing this before, hell, got him a head coaching job. I don't know that that's going to matter when it's all said and done. I think this is more of a move that signals when you start firing coordinators, that means you as the head coach are feeling the heat and that someone above you is telling you, like, we got to make a change. Not, I'm not going to say for change's sake, but for optics, because if we don't, then, then you're next. You know, you're the next thing coming. So they're just trying to figure out a way of winning football games, looking more competitive to have some sort of optimism going in the offseason. Otherwise, I think you got to be careful if you're Joe Judge. Obviously, David Gettleman, too, with the way these draft picks have kind of worked out or lack of development, they, they all could be moving on. They all could be starting over again. We had a topic yesterday, the most awkward quarterbacking situation. Not necessarily bad, but awkward. Uh, the Niners, with what's going on with Jimmy G, that they're they're winning. Like, do you? What if he gets you to the playoffs? Do you then say, hey, thanks, some nice parting gifts? Uh, the Eagles, are they going to be all in on Jalen Hurts? The Falcons, do you stay with Matt Ryan? Uh, the Dolphins, with what's going on there? The Saints, it feels like they have three quarterbacks, but they don't have one quarterback there. Which quarterbacking situation is the most awkward to you? Uh, I mean, you named two that I think are really awkward. You know, you got the Green Bay Packers and their success, the Jordan Love sitting right there. 
and Aaron's playing banged up and you feel like there's the potential based on the rework contract that he's not even back next year. And so how's that going to work out? Because I look at the, at the Packers as one of the best, if not the best team in the NFL. So there's that out there. Like, are you really going to part ways after what could be a, a Super Bowl winning season? Um, there's a lot of awkwardness to that, right? As far, as far as what it looks like, at least now heading forward. And then the other one is Seattle. I mean, we, we obviously know Russell Wilson, there, and for some reason, he has got the intention or was floated out there that he maybe, you know, would have some other teams he wouldn't be traded to. And they've never experienced, you know, a losing season, but it seems like it's headed in that direction right now. The awkwardness of Pete Carroll in the press conferences, the offense hasn't looked like what they needed to. Now he's got the hurt finger that he's trying to overcome which I think he came back too early. I've dealt with that injury before. Um, and, I, and I think it, it's hard to adjust how your, you know, your hand feels throwing the football after that injury. So they've got all these things. And meanwhile, like lingering on the outside is, oh, yeah, he kind of threw out some teams that he'd, he'd want to go to in the offseason. And that's still lingering over there. So is, is this going to get to a point where maybe after the season in Seattle, they have their first losing season together? And Pete and Russell say, hey, why don't you guys start over? I'll, we'll go our separate ways. I mean – those are more, I think, the awkward points, like because we're kind of half that halfway point now, that I think those two teams are kind of staring at least at down the road uh, at the halfway point of the season. I don't think Russ is there in Seattle next year. I I just I think there's got to be a change for him. I wonder if Pete Carroll would leave if Russ would want to stay, um, but it feels like Russ is going to be on an, another team next year. I just. Can't imagine. What about the Giants? What about the Giants? I mean, I feel like they're, if they move on, obviously, they've already moved on from the OC. If they end up moving on from, you know, Gettleman or if they end up moving on from Joe Judge as well, that's a team that, look, it's a big market. You know he's a part of the power couple. Uh, and that's a roster with, when you talk about Evan Ingram, you talk about Kadarius Tony, who I think he's got a lot of ability. Uh, Sterling Shepard, Kenny Galladay is on that roster. Saquon Barkley, too. There's a lot of weapons. And that's a kind of winnable division. I don't know. I just think that market, everything mm. else, I think he wants to get to the East Coast, especially with Sierra. You know, they want to be a part of that. That's that's one that I'd keep an eye on. Safe travels to Ann Arbor. Are they going to be nice to you in Ann Arbor? Um, I mean, I, I only started once there. We won. Um, so we'll see. You know, I, I feel like there's not really much trash talking they can do there. I, I told the, the fans there in East Lansing that back in, I think it was with 2004, 2006, I bought real estate. Uh, there in East Lansing. So I, I said, make sure they take care for, for me while I'm gone. I've got a little real estate in Ann Arbor too. So hopefully the fans are taking care of my property there on the field. This, this might not help, but what you're saying now, this might not. Oh, help. no, it won't. No, uh, I don't well, think so. Yeah, you, you know, yeah, we'll figure it out. You might get mooned. They might, you know, pull their pants down and moon you in Ann Arbor. Well, Michigan fans are a little more classier. They don't they don't spread the cheeks like, like in East Lansing. You know, I guess that's the difference in a state school, a private institution. All I, that. I, I still can't imagine. What's that first time you pull in there with Notre Dame on the team bus, and then you got all of these guys who were pulling their pants down and you know mooning you? It, it's a it's appalling. It's like, uh, well, look, we're all we're all experiencing Thanksgiving tomorrow. Uh, it's not overly pretty sometimes looking at the backside of your turkey, the way it's stuffed in there. All right. And it kind of resembles that. So I hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving wow. meal tomorrow. And yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. There. yeah. That's a Getting great, ready to cut the turkey. great memory. Yeah. Great image there. Hey, uh, safe travels. Great to talk to you. Thank you, buddy. Hey, thankful for you guys. I uh, hope everyone enjoys their Thanksgiving. That's Brady Quinn. You can uh, listen to him Monday through Friday. Two pros and a cup of Joe with LeBar Arrington, Jonas Knox.